the Lord. Glory be to God. We give God all the glory. We give God all the honor. Blessed be the name of our God. God blessed be God. Um, <clears throat> I think at this time, by the special grace of God, um, just before we go into um, a message, I just want to welcome everyone. Um, and by the special grace of God, uh, I, I think if we can get one or two people to even share a testimony of what God has done yesterday, what God has done in their lives, I believe it will be in a great order. The Bible says um, <clears throat> we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. So I believe it's in order if we want to give one or two people want to share a word, how they were blessed. Please um, just raise your hand and just share testimony to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Anyone want to share a, a testimony quickly? Please. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to bless God for how he has been good to me and my family. 
from January to this moment is is just is by his grace. 2020 is full of memory for me and my family. Although that's part of the pandemic, but it's still a greater year for us. I bless God for my family back home. They are all well, no cause of alarm, no cause of rushing. We, we, just, we, we, are, we just thank God because it's not by our power. My going out every day, traveling up and down. God, and, God and has been faithful. I really appreciate him for that. Because I didn't know what to say. 2020 is a year. Is a year, but we really appreciate him for that. That's my testimony. Praise, just... the, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you, Sister Rita. We can take one more. One more. The Bible says we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. So we don't underestimate the power of our testimony. Anyone, please. If you have a testimony, please um, go ahead. If we can take one more. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I believe that we are all overcomers. Praise the Lord. We give God the glory. We give God the glory. Father, we thank you. Anyone wants to thank God? We thank the Lord for those who are celebrating their birthday or who have just celebrated, we give God the glory. Ah, I see someone shaking their head. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, we thank the Lord for this month. We give God all the praise. We give God all the glory. We thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Father, we thank you for that powerful testimony. Our sister have shared, we plead that the blood of Jesus will continue to speak over your home and over your family and over everyone that is present and the families connected to our families in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise Master Jesus. We give God the glory. As we um, carry on the service, the Bible says we give honor to whom honor is due. We want to welcome all our pastors all our workers, everyone present. You are all special guests in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor and welcome our pastor, Pastor Diary from Salvation House, Didcock. We welcome Mrs. as well. Welcome, um, we welcome Pastor David and wife, and Mrs. Awojubi, you are welcome. God bless you. And my dear beloved wife, Lillian, you're all welcome and all the workers and everyone that has been supporting the work and all special guests, those who are um, on this, in this special program for the first time, we, we pray that the Lord God Almighty will cause his hand to be mighty over you and you shall receive a divine Rehoboth for this new season in the mighty name of Jesus. As we welcome our dear Father, in the Lord, who is the provisional pastor for Wales region and province one, he oversees um, over 45, 44 parishes in the um, province. Uh, he's a senior pastor of Promised Land, um, London. He's a daddy, a, a father heart man who is anointed, well breasted in so many different ways. And we really appreciate him for yesterday making the time and being a blessing for all of us. And the, you know, the, when God is a, about to do someone something in someone's life, you always send a man, you always send someone. And I believe that our daddy is a God sent in this season. Praise the Lord. So let's open our hearts as we have prayed and welcome the Holy Spirit and we welcome our daddy also praise the lord god bless you sir god bless amen you. amen what a joy pastor michael well done the lord bless you and increase you on every side we appreciate you we appreciate uh our pastors uh in lighthouse Whitney, pastor david i would be and his dear wife we appreciate your wife too. don't let me forget that pastor lillian wonderful woman Standing behind Pastor Michael, 
and to make sure the home is well settled and the ministry is also moving well. We thank God for uh, our pastor in Salvation Parish over there, Pastor Dario Renussi and his wonderful wife. The Lord continue to stand by you and continue to bless you in deep court, in Whitney, in Abingdon, all over Oxfordshire, in the name of Jesus Christ. And all that he has committed into your hands, you will not fail. You will continue to be outstanding, be courageous, and do mighty deeds that will please his heart and will make the Almighty God to come around you every day of your life to protect, preserve, and to bless you abundantly. The best is yet to come. We are getting so close, even into the new year right now. Please, people of God, let's look up to God. Let's believe him. Let's be excited. For better days are ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. We celebrate all our workers in our parishes over there, all the Aarons, all the Hawks, all the Jethros, the Deborahs, the Roof, the Esthers, uh, the Joshuas, the Caleb's, making things happen, encouraging us, lifting our hands, pouring water into the hand of the men and women of God, the women in the churches. As Elisha served Elijah, and as Timothy served Paul, as Peter served Jesus Christ, I pray in the name of Jesus, and they were all blessed mightily, the Lord will bless you. Your labor of love, even in the Lord, shall not be in vain, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will give you a heart, a heart of diligence, even to be able to do more for God, and hope on the Almighty God, who is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Our reward is in God, it's not in man, and God will surely reward you. Please continue to be fervent, keep supporting the men and the women of God, and we'll all continue to reign with Jesus Christ and see our cities and nation and the global world transformed and blessed forevermore. Your strength is not being drawn in vain. God Almighty will keep on increasing your strength as you keep releasing yourself unto the work unto the almighty God. Thank you. And thank you for all the men, all the women, uh, all the youth, all the children, all our departments functioning effectively and making sure the work of the Lord gets done. We appreciate you all. We thank God for all our pastors who love me, uh, even behind the scene. We thank God for your life. We have also just finished our own service here. I believe you finished your service and you have come to support these great men and women of God in their own combined service today. Thank you, and thank you very much. Shall we pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, what a joy, privilege, honor, even to come unto your presence today one more time. The deep calls unto the deep, O God Almighty. We long and pant even for you, King of glory, as a deer panted for water. So our soul pant after you, O God Almighty. Lord, we fast for you today. We fast, O God Almighty, Father, for the release of your word, the outpouring of grace, even at your feet, to partake, O oh God, of the riches of your glory and the inheritance, even that you have given to mankind. We long for you, we thank you, that you're going to satisfy our longing souls today and help us move us to greater heights, greater dimension, new levels of glory, impact, O oh God, and fruitfulness. The Lord Almighty of the remnant of the house of Judah, the remain shall yet grow root downwards and bear fruit upwards. Let that be our portion today as we look up to you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the anointing to preach the word and the anointing to be doers of your word that we will not deceive ourselves in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the power, O God Almighty, to become who you want us to be. We receive today for the empowerment and revelation of Rehoboth in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. We're going to pick up from where we stopped yesterday, and today we'll be looking at why Rehoboth. Because for you to understand the purpose of God, you must know why God carried things out. Why did God make the heaven and the heart? Why did God make man in his own image and after his likeness? Why did God form you as a person? Why did he ordain you right from the womb of your mother in case you didn't know you were ordained? <laughs> Hallelujah. Whether it took you 10, 20, 30 years before you were born again, you are already ordained right from that womb. You need to understand and know that today. There is a purpose for your life. 
There is an empowerment out for you from the presence and the glory of the Almighty God. You are not on your own. Let's go to the text that we read in Genesis 26, verse 22 today again. And they moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it, so he called its name Rehoboth. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in land. And we said Rehoboth also means to overflow. Rehoboth also means to enlarge. So today we are looking at, at why Rehoboth. Why did God, you know, emphasize and instituted Rehoboth? And how do we get there? That is what we are looking at today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask of think, according to his power that is at work even in us. To him be glory forever and ever, walk with our hand. Amen. So God Almighty can stretch us. He can, uh, he can refill us when we begin to empty ourselves Unto him, he refills us so that we can become the distribution center in the world that we live in. Distribution center, whether physically, spiritually, materially, ministerially, in gifts and skills and talents and everything, in your resourcefulness. God wants to keep on refilling you. But when you come to a point where you are not emptying yourself, there is no way God can refill you. If you hold it, a glass of water or a glass of Diet Coke in your hand, filled up completely, and you just put it on the table or you hold it in your hand. You're not, you're not sharing it. You're not drinking it. It's just there. There's no way somebody who is holding another jug to refill can refill it again. You know, sir? It is impossible. There must be a use. You must be putting your life to use your gifts, to use your skills, to use your resourcefulness. The leader in you, the champion in you. The warrior in you, the greatness in you must be put to use at all times. Glory be to God forevermore, so that God can now begin to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ever desire or ask or pray or think about. Because God is the most resourceful person even in the entire heaven and heart. All our supply comes from him. He's our all-sufficient God. That's why it's called the El Shaddai. Hallelujah. So now, number one, why the overflow? God overflows his blessing over us so that we can, we too can overflow to other people. God wants you to overflow. He looked at Abraham and said, I will bless you, and in you all the, and you will be a blessing. And in you, all the nations of the heart shall be blessed. It was, it was a done deal. That's why Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says, For Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, Cause is every man that hangs on the tree, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. And we have received this blessing even by faith in the Spirit. God Almighty have released it to us, or we release it in spirit by faith. So God Almighty wants all the embodiment of blessing of mankind channeled through the blessing of Abraham. And we thank God that Jesus is greater than Abraham. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. The Bible says in James chapter 4, verse 3, you see, when we begin to ask God to bless us, we must have at the back of our mind that that everything God gives us is not just for us. The blessings of the Lord that makes one rich with no sorrow added to it is actually for other people. Look at it right now. You ask and you do not receive because you ask a means that you may spend it on your loss. Why is it called a means? You are asking it because you are asking to be focused on yourself. It's on selfishness. It's on you as a person. And any time God begins to look at you first time, second time, third time, and you, are, you keep on being selfish and hoarding, even the time, the resources he has given to you, it will stop distributing to you as a person. That is what it means to ask a miss. Or when you are not asking in the will of God, the will of God, in uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it said, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove that which is good. Look at it now, that which is good 
acceptable and the perfect will of God. The perfect will of God, the acceptable and good thing is consideration for other people, consideration for other resources, other, other churches, other uh, groups around you, for other entities apart from yourself, other families, uh, other undertakings, apart from what you personally are made of. God wants you to stretch out. He wants you to stretch out. That's why he is lengthening your course to the right and to the left so that you don't remain an island or remain stagnant on the same spot or be going around in circle. God wants to stretch you so that your influence can stretch, so that everything about you can bring fruitfulness to other people everywhere, wherever you find yourself. We're talking about why overflow in First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 33. The Bible says, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they might be saved. You didn't get saved just for yourself only. God saved you so you too can save others. That's why he wants you to go into the old world and preach the gospel. In James chapter 16, you read from verse 15, 16, and 17. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. And he that does not believe shall be condemned. And this sign shall follow them that believe that in my name they will do what? They will, they will speak in new tongues. They will cast out devils. He said they will lay hold on serpent. They will drink deadly things that shall not hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Look at that right now. That is for the whole world. That is for other people. That is for different groups of people, irrespective of their language, their creed, their nationality, their religion. Hallelujah. Jesus died for a whole, ma- whole lot of mankind. He died for the terrorists. He died for the adulterer. He died for the prostitute. He died for the wicked. He died for the hired killer. He died for the imperfect. If you look at the church today, the church is made up of not of perfect people. We are all imperfect people. The church is like an hospital. Okay, You better understand that. Anytime you see somebody, you say they are perfect and they are coming high and lofty, pious looking, and they, they are perfect inside the church. As soon as they enter the church, that church becomes imperfect because we are all imperfect. And in our imperfection, that is where the power and the glory of God is manifested. So if you get into your church and you are acting so highly holier than thou, I tell you, before we know it, the Lord will expose you. Because the church is an hospital. It's an hospital where we need God's intervention in our mental situation, emotional situation, marital situation, financial situation, in the ticking of the organs of our body to function effectively. That's healing and restoration and deliverance from satanic powers and demonic and, sin and devilish influences. So the church. It's an hospital. Hallelujah. You need to begin to see that. And then you begin to see how you now get to overflow to other people. In Psalm 2, verse 8, look at God speaking. He said, ask of me, and I shall give you the even for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the heart for your possession. Look at that right now. God wants you involved in soul winning, winning the whole world for himself. He wants you to take over this whole heart. Psalm 115, verse 16, the Bible says, The heaven of heaven belongs unto our God, and the heart he has given to the Son of Man. God has brought you into this heart to make a difference, to be a difference maker, a world changer, a city changer, a people changer, a community changer. That is why you are here. You need to understand that basis and power in your mind, and that is what commands and triggers Rehoboth. Hallelujah. When you begin to see that you are placed in the city, you are placed in the field, so you can become a difference maker, made to be a difference, and a pathfinder all around you, you begin to see that you will want to manifest at all costs. You don't want anything to stop you, to hold you back. You're not looking at meeting your own personal need, because as soon as you are meeting the needs of your community and other people, automatically your own needs becomes guaranteed and they are all met. Hallelujah. The next thing we need to know is everything God gives you is for others, such as your kindness, your gift, 
your skills, your talent, your resources, your usefulness, your servanthood, your material possessions, your influence, your ministry, your anointing, your favor. Please add your own list and you begin to see that anytime you minister all these to other people, I tell you, I guarantee you, God will make all grace abound towards you, that you will have sufficiency in all things, and you begin to abound more unto good works. God wants good works, even to come through you, to flow through you more and more and more and more, and be guaranteed that God Almighty, who is the caller, will surely do what he said he would do through you and I. You see, you can't just maintain your own personal kindness for your own self alone. You need to show kindness to others. Even though you may want to show it to yourself, well, which is not bad, definitely, but you need to show majority of your kindness to others. Your usefulness is not just to be useful for yourself alone. How can you be useful for yourself alone? Why will you be a fruit for yourself alone? When you begin to make yourself resourceful and useful for others, you know what? God begins to do what? Make his gift in you to be seen and to known everywhere. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16. Say, you are the salt of the heart. Yes, the salt is very useful. But you see, it's supposed, it's given so that it can save all other people and add value and quality to others. He said, but if the salt is no longer useful, it is taken by men and trampled under feet. May your own salt not be trampled under feet. May your life not be trampled under feet. May your calling not be trampled under the feet of men. He said, you are the light of the world, a city that is set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. He said, no man put a candle under the table. When you put a candle under the table, it's for only for your personal use only. But you say that he takes a candle and put it upon the table that he might give light to all people all around it. Look at that right now. In verse 16, I'll say, let your light so shine. <laughs> so that all men may see your good works and then they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. Look at that right now. That is not for you. It's for other people. This is not a time to leave the church. This is a time to stand in the church. This is a time to receive empowerment from the Almighty God. This is a time to stay tuned and stand courageously in the presence of the glory of God and say, how can I be, how can I be more relevant? How can I shine my light? Therefore, what you need to do right now is repackage yourself. Rebrand yourself. Repackage yourself. Rebrand yourself. Become more resourceful. Re re reassess your skills, your gift, your talent. Reevaluate yourself right now. And then regroup yourself. Repackage yourself. Let your light, when you bring all constitutions of light together, it becomes a laser light and becomes so effective that composition of light begins to cut through hard metals. That is what happens when you become repackaged. Rebrand yourself, you have to become more resourceful. Why Rehoboth? You want Rehoboth to overflow to others, just like Boaz overflow to Ruth. You see, Boaz was a very resourceful man in those times, one of the richest people, you know, of the city and of the community. When Ruth came with Naomi, her mother-in-law, back after all their, uh, their thriller journey of losses and trouble, and they came back, they wanted to start, start afresh, and they got into the vineyard of Boaz. Boaz would say, well, because it was his custom for all his staffs on the vineyard to leave handfuls of, uh, of, of, of fruits, uh, of, of plants, of crops, right on the field, so that other people who are not all those blood that blessed can come around and pick from them, pick fruit, pick food, pick vegetables and take to their home so that they can be able to have something to eat. And then Ruth came, I was such a one of people walking in the vineyard, 
and she was so faithful, very diligent, very hardworking. She wasn't thinking about herself. She was always thinking about her mother-in-law, Naomi, always thinking about other people walking there. It didn't take long for them to notice that that somebody knew who had come in, who is so much good, who is a team player, who is better than other, or who is better all around, even than other people around her over there. That they 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 they, they, they spoke to the to Boaz and said that somebody who is here so so. And Boaz had to take notice of her and say, well, leave some handful of grains behind for her, you know, especially for a mother-in-law, for a few members of her family that I left. And guess what happened? As she began to overflow, even in that resourcefulness to Ruth, one day she became the husband of Ruth. And Ruth, through Boaz, gave birth to Hobbit. Hobbit gave birth even to Jesse. Jesse gave birth uh, even uh, to, uh, to, to David. And today we could see Jesus Christ is the root of Jesse and the son of David. That is what overflow can do. When you begin to operate in overflow, when you begin to overflow in Rehoboth, when you begin to overflow in enlargement, you begin to see how God begins to multiply not just your descendants, but your resources, your life as a person, and you become more useful to the Almighty God. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 5, the Bible says, And Solomon begat Boaz through Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute in Joshua who helped the people of God. And God converted and took a years of waste and death and affliction and hopelessness and converted into honor. Can you see that? God cleaned up a prostitute and made her a honorable woman. And look at what happened. And Boaz begat Obed with Ruth. Obed begat Jesse. Can you see? But Rahab moved from being an element of death and abandoned them, forsaken, messed up, dirty, cleaned up by God, and became the great, great, great grandmother of Jesus Christ. Wow, this is serious. That's what a robot can do. Are you ready for a robot? You see, the sea is not full or full of itself because it keeps overflowing to other seas. Yeah, the sea is not full are full of itself. Many people are full of themselves today, boasting in proud pride and arrogance. Such people, they can't be resourceful. They can't step, they can't operate in robot completely. You need to empty yourself, just like the sea. The sea is not full because it keeps emptying itself into other sea. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, all the rivers run into the sea, and the sea is not full. Unto the place where the river came, there he returns again. Look at that. The more he empties himself, the more he gets refilled. The more he empties himself, the more he gets refilled. Yet it's not full because he keeps on giving up. The only sea that is full and dead is the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is like a, is a lake. It's no longer running. It's a lake. It has become stagnated on the same spot, on the same level, because it's so selfish, it never gives anything up. It takes and takes and takes and takes and takes and takes. That's why there are a lot of dead creatures in the Dead Sea. It's so salty, so messed up completely, it's so stagnant, stinking completely, because it never gave itself out, it never overflows. Why Rehoboth? Rehoboth does not start until our motives are right. Your motives have to be right. Why do you want God to help you? Why do you want God to bless you? Why do you want that miracle? Why do you want that job? Why do you want to marry that woman, that man? Why do you want to be in that city? Why do you want that business? Why? Why? Why do you want God to prosper you? Why? He, until our motives are right, Rehoboth is not triggered to start for us. Until our motives arrive, when our heart is open for other people, other people such as those who are in need, other people who are other families, who are other, other churches or other church members, our friends, our nation, the global outlook entirely, until you begin to do or strategize to see what you can do to make this world a better place to live in, Rehoboth will never start. 
And unfortunately, many people also, they were not taking into cognizance what happened to Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. Because the Bible said in verse 20, when Isaac's servant dug the well that were uncovered, uh, the well that Abraham dug during his days and were all covered up and they were all uncovering everything, the people of Gerah took that well from them. And they named that well, what did they name it? Essek. What is Essek? Essek means strife. Anytime you are living in strife, you will always produce contention. Anytime you live in strife, you will always produce conflict. Anytime you live in strife, you will always bring arguments. You be so argumentative, you want to defend you and only yourself. Anytime you live in strife, you will always want to be quarrelsome, just quarreling and picking quarrel with everybody and everything that you can find. Anytime you are living in strife, you will always be in dispute and fighting among one another. Anytime you're living in strife, there is an habitual stress of life that comes around you. And guess what? These are the blockers of Rehoboth. They will not allow you to go beyond that level and see afar off the kingdom is beauty and the land, even that is afar off that God has provided for you, and more other opportunities that God is giving to you, you need to get rid of strife. You need to get free from strife. You know, the servants of uh, Isaac left that place. They didn't want to strive with the people of Gerar. And they moved further again, uncovered another well, and guess what happened? Those people came again and took it from them, and they called that place Sitna, Sitna means a place of hatred. Anytime you are walking in hatred, guess what happens? You begin to be an adversary and opposition to other people, and other people become adversary and opposition to you. Anytime you are walking in hatred, you begin to walk in enmity and jealousy. You become jealous of other people's success, je jealous of other people's achievement, because you never see beyond your own borders to see that God can also lift you up, and God can also help you, and God can also move you forward, and God can also advance you. Anytime you are walking in sitting and sitting down in hatred, guess what? You live in accusation, accusing others. It is because uh, they did not help me. It's because uh, I was not born in the right country, in the right place, or I did not marry the right man, I did not marry the right woman. Oh, every problem of my life is as a result of so, so, and so, and so, and so. You have the blame game. Anytime you are sitting in sit now, which is a seat of the hatred, but you see, until you move beyond that level, the robot will not unfold. The servants of Isaac moved forward, and they went to verse 22 right now, and they uncovered another well, and guess what? They found water there. And then they were rejoicing because none of the people of Gerar came again. None of those Philistines came again to take over that place. And they were fruitful and they began to expand. And if you read the entire story from there on, you could see that even the king came at night to make alliance with Isaac and resourcefulness and say, Isaac, we can see that God is with you. They will see that God is with you when you begin to operate in truthfulness of Rehoboth and become an influence in everything that you do and not sitting down in strife, in quarrelsomeness, or in accusation or in anger or in, uh, or in uh, accusing other people or blaming everybody. Oh, yes, and I, was, I was the one who was here first. I don't understand why I have to be bypassed or whatever. You can say all you like. But what are you saying about today and tomorrow? The past is over. Many people are still sitting on the past. How long will you sit on the past? People have come around, they've helped you, they've spoken into existence. You're still sitting in the past. If you want to remain in the past, we are moving forward. Are you ready? We are moving higher. We are moving higher. For the Lord is on the throne. We are moving higher. Hallelujah. We are moving forward. We are moving higher. We are not going to be stayed back. We are not going to be left back. We are not going to hack back. We are not going to sit in the seat of adversary and quarrelsomeness and strive. Breaking forth, our Rehoma draw near. Glory be to God. Psalm 84, verse 11. The Bible says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. 
the Lord will give grace and glory, and no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. When you begin to walk uprightly before the Lord, the Lord will make you a blessing. The Lord will continue to advance you. He'll make you resourceful and will begin to do things even through you, meeting the needs of other people all around you. Uprightness is important. Get rid of strife. Get rid of, of quarrelsomeness. Come into your neighbor today. God is beckoning unto you right now. Are you ready? Are you coming? Are you coming? Are you coming? We need to know the next point is to operate in such a way that you will overflow to others. Begin to operate in such a way. Ask God for opportunities. How can I be a blessing? How can I be more resourceful? How can I do this one? How can I make alliance with the council of my city, the MP of my territory? How can I be a blessing even, uh, even through all the companies around me? How can I how can I form associations and alliances with people of influence in the city instead of just suspecting them and getting jealous that they are successful more than you? No, you need to walk together. You need to ask God for opportunity. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 15, the Bible says, Whereas you have been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through you, I will make you an eternal excellence, the joy of many generations. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, the Bible says that in blessing, I will bless you, and in multiplying, I will multiply you. You see it as the stars of the heaven and as the sea shore, and your seed shall possess the gates of their enemies. Yes, 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 yes. Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. The Bible says, and Moses said, this is Moses talking to his father-in-law right now. And Moses said unto Hobah, the son of Rehul, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law. He said, we are journeying into the place of peace. The Lord has said them, and that you will give to us. He said, come with us, and we will do you good. For the Lord has spoken good things concerning us. God has spoken good things concerning us. Hallelujah. And God wants you to come into that place of resourcefulness in every area of your life. Glory be to God forevermore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God forevermore. We appreciate you, King of glory, the Lord of the universe. Hallelujah. God wants you to be in a position of Rehoboth so that you can be like him. God is a blesser. He is a blesser. In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 16, Deuteronomy 15, verse 6, rather, he said, For the Lord your God bless you as he has promised, and you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow, and you shall reign over many nations, and they shall not reign over you. For you to, to understand and step into that Rehoboth, there are certain attitudes that you need to have right now. Attitudes of Rehoboth right now. We are talking about why Rehoboth. Look at the attitude of Rehoboth right now. Number one, become a blessing in a generous way. Not in a stingy way. Or you're trying to lord it over people and say, well, without me, there's nothing you can achieve. I've seen some, some wives say to their husband, or there are some husbands say to their wife and say, without me, you, you can't amount to anything in this land. Really? God will bypass you. And you will know that there is a God in heaven by whom actions are weighed, who can, who can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ever ask of me. If you have said that about your spouse, please repent today. Don't let God bypass you and push you aside. Let God begin to see your resourcefulness in making the best of that woman, making the best out of that man, making the best out of those people all around you. I've seen some people who are members of the board of trustees of our churches, you know, launch very simple, serious war against their pastor. You say, without horse, you can't achieve anything here. You see, and God will remove you in one way or another. It can be by death. It can be by imprisonment because you are standing against the vision of God that you have spoken through that man and woman of God in that city. Yes, God will never, 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 never stop or slow down in his plan and purpose for a generation, for his purpose and plan for a city or for a nation. Hallelujah. Don't be a stumbling block because you'll be fighting against God. Return today. If you're a member of the board of trustee and have been causing stress, 
quarter some names, uh, bringing high blood pressure into the life of pastor because of one little power that they gave you. Oh my God, when you see some people who are not renewed uh, and you give them a little power, they become what? Monsters. That's why God has to remove monsters from our lives and from our path. Become a blessing in a generous way. Generosity in, in, in a liberal and lavish and bountiful abundance in the way. Proverbs 11, verse 25 says, The liberal soul shall be made flourishing of fat, and he that waters himself shall be watered. If you keep watering the vision of God in that church, in that city, God will water the vision of your life. It will begin to make you abound and progressive and increase and sustain and begin to subdue everything that stands against you. No matter how terrible a city might be or occultic a city might be, God has a power to break the power down and bring his influence into the city. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9, he said, He that had a bountiful high shall be blessed, for he give his bread to the poor. Number two, second attitude of Rehoboth, quickly here right now, he said, Be a blessing sacrificially. Let there be sacrifice in what you do. Sacrifice is, is in going over and above the usual. Going over and above the usual. God wants you to be sacrificial in your life, in your word, in your giving, in your undertaking, in your service to mankind, service to your church, service to your community. If you are giving tea to, to the people in the community, if you are bringing uh, uh, health services into the people in community, if you are bringing health and fitness to the people into the community, if you are bringing food, if you are bringing uh, all kind of benefits to the people in the community, do it sacrificially. Do it sacrificially. Let whatever you are giving out be the best. <laughs> well, there was an outreach I told some people to organize one time. So I went around to inspect some of the uh, some of the resources that needed to be given out. So, for example, I look at I mean I go into the place of the food and I look at the sandwiches and I saw that they were not nicely caught. You see, people in nice hotels they they have nice caught sandwiches. Why can't we the church have nice caught sandwiches with the crust removed? And then I opened it, and I saw the ham and the cheese were used, and I discovered that they were Tesco value. I don't want that to be given. So I said, well, take this away. We don't want no Tesco value here. And you go and buy some nice luxury ham from Tesco or Sainsbury or Waitrose, anywhere, and please repackage these sandwiches, because by the time the people are eating those sandwiches, they must be saying, Oh, God bless this church. <laughs> that is how to be sacrificial. Not just giving some things, managing and managing things here and there. Or, and then you expect God to bring you to Rehoboth. We need to do what? Offer our best. Your first. Your vile valuable. Offer it to people. Offer it to God. So what you are planning to keep, break your fallow ground so that there can be more resourcefulness coming your way. In Psalm 126, verse 5, it said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Hosea chapter 10, verse 12, it says, Sow to yourself in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16 says, But to do good and to communicate, don't forget, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. God is well pleased. Number three, let's look at what we need to understand again about our attitude of Rehoboth. Be a blessing joyfully. Get excited when you go and God has made you a blessing. 
when you are praying to be a blessing, start getting joyful so that when the blessing begins to flow from you, joy begins to come. You begin to see it as an honor, as a privilege. Joy and the rejoicing of your heart to get it done. You're always smiling. You're always happy. You're always jubilating as you are giving to other people with no motive. You know, haven't you seen some people, when you bless them so much, they come to you. They are suspecting you. They say, what's the catch? You have touched their heart. When people are asking, what's the catch? You've really touched their heart. You've made a difference somewhere there. Just keep smiling to yourself and say, there's no catch. I'm just excited to be a blessing. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the Bible says, Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Generosity from a willing heart of love is important. Let's, let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. The Bible says, Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out the devils. Freely you have been given, freely give. Let it come out of you with joy, with excitement. <laughs> Glory be to God. Everything you do, do it as unto the Lord. And whatever you do, things as unto the Lord, is with excitement. It's with joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God forevermore. Let's look at number four, attitude of Rehoboth. Be a blessing regularly, not just one of regularly, every now and then, every now and then, once and again, every time, every moment, regularly, always, be a blessing always, be a blessing continuously, be a blessing aggressively, be a blessing systematically, be a blessing persistently. That is what it means to be a blessing regularly. Be, uh, be continuous, do it always, do it aggressively, do it systematically, do it persistently, even when people don't seem to appreciate what you are doing. Don't worry about that. You are doing it unto the Lord. Everything you are doing, you are doing it unto the Lord. And guess what? God commands his rain to come down. The rain, the door house begins to open. The treasure house door begins to open upon you. And you begin to have your rain in this season. And you begin to see the glory of the living God arise upon you every moment of your life. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 6, the Bible says, In the morning sow your seed, in the evening don't withhold your hand, for you do not know which one will prosper. Either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. God Almighty encourages you to do what? Be an all-round blessing, regularly, regularly, consistently, every time, aggressively. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, the Bible also said, uh, number five, uh, attitude of Rehoboth. He said, have the expectation of Rehoboth every time. Have the expectation of Rehoboth. Be expectant every time. As you are trusting the Almighty God, as you are doing things unto the Lord, as a church, as a family, as a community of the body of Christ, as a Christian, as a pastor, as a minister, as a businessman, as a businesswoman, for God to make more grace abound, so as you be expectant of Rehoboth, be expectant. You are like a farmer who has planted the seed even in the ground, and the rain has fallen, the sun has come, he has plowed the ground, he has removed the tears and the wheat and everything, oxygen is flowing all around, is preparing the barn. What is that? Expectation of the harvest. Be expectant for a whole bunch to come. Be expectant. Be expectant. Be expectant. Everything you do, you do unto the Lord must be with expectation and say, oh God, I thank you that I have done what you asked me to do right now. You are the one that gives seeds to the sower and bread to the eater. Look at that right now. He gave seed to the sower, bread to the eater. God Almighty is the one who does the conversion, who takes those two seeds or three seeds of corn you plant in the ground and give you a whole corn on the hog. More than one, even so much multiplication, be expectant of report. Don't let people tell you and say, well, whatever, if you give anything, don't expect anything back. Jesus Christ was given by God and God expected the whole world to be changed and be saved. Yes, God expected Christians all over the world 
in Iraq, in Iran, in Pakistan, in Af- Afghanistan, in Sudan, in Libya, everywhere in the hardcore of nations of the heart, in China, in North Korea, God expects Christians to come out through what? The death of Jesus Christ. Expectation. You need expectation. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. The Bible says, Surely there shall be an end, and your expectations shall not be cut off. Be expectant. Be expectant. Expectation will make you to keep dreaming. Expectation will make you to be re- to, to be to be to keep on being relevant. Expectation will make you to be ready and at a lot to hear the voice of God and instruction and say, go and be a blessing right now. I'll raise you to be a blessing in this world that we live in. There shall be an end. Your expectation or your hope will not be cut off. Hallelujah. With this in mind, people of God, we are ready for a whole boat right now. I speak into your life today that God will usher you into your realm of Rehoboth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth and all your years of wasted effort and labor in the name of Jesus. The Lord will convert it and bring you into your season of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. The Lord will satisfy you early today and make you glad and he will restore to you according to number of years that you have lost or you have been afflicted. He will restore to you year for year, month for month, week for week, day for day, hour for hour, minute for minute, second for second, in the name of Jesus Christ, microsecond for microsecond, the Lord will restore to you. He will restore all financial resources that have been stolen that you have lost in the name of Jesus. I declare your season of harvest is here. I declare the glory of God risen upon you. I declare God continue to help you to make a difference in your community, in your family, in your city, in the nation, in the world at large. I declare God gives you a voice even to nation and begin to speak through you in the name of Jesus. Through you, all the nations of the heart shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus, your mouth shall testify of the goodness of the living God. You will hear good news, good news from a far country, good news from nearby, good news from the north and south and east and the west. The Lord will give you opportunity to step into your Rehoboth. The Lord will give you new dreams and dreams and visions even from this day forevermore. In the name of Jesus, you will not be alone. You will not be small. You will not be little. Your small will become a thousand. Your little will become a mighty nation. And the Lord will hasten to do it. The Lord will bless you and make you a thousand times more numerous in His grace and favor and power and influence and fruitfulness all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. As this year is rolling to an end, there shall be no loss in your family, no loss in your body, no loss in your destiny. The Lord Almighty will make you to amount to greater works and greater heights. You will amount unto good works all the days of your life in the name of Jesus. Every ministry under you shall flourish. They shall blossom. The people of God shall advance and prosper. They will do well. They will stretch to the right and to the left in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Perhaps you are under the sound of my voice. I have not yet made Jesus the Lord of your life. I'd like to give you the opportunity today to surrender your life to Jesus Christ and receive him into your heart as your Lord and Savior. It's appointed unto man in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this judgment, where will you spend your eternity? God wants you to spend your eternity with him in heaven. There is, uh, there is hell fire where the fire keeps burning. The fire never dies. The worms there never die. The fire is never quenched. It's a place of torment and destruction. You can't afford to be destined for hell. I want to pray for you today so that you can be destined for heaven. So that if there can be a U-turn for you from the way of hell into the path of God right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is just bow your heads a minute and be serious in your heart and say, Lord Jesus. Have mercy upon me. Thank you for shedding your precious blood on the cross of Calvary. Today, I empty myself and I confess all my sins unto you. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Wash me in your precious blood today and let it be well with me. I open the door of my heart unto you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come and be my Lord. and Come and be my Savior. Let old things be passed away in my life. And let all things become brand new. Let me become a new creation in you. 
a creature, O God Almighty Father, to behold even by your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that today I am saved and I am born again. In Jesus' name. I pray for you today that the Almighty God will receive you, will save your soul, even to the uttermost. He will preserve you. And by the precious blood of Jesus, you'll be established in righteousness to continue to grow and develop even in the things of God. Thank you, precious Father. I pray for all backsliders today. Honor the sound of my voice wherever they are. Maybe hearing through the streaming, oh God, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, anywhere, oh God, on Twitter right now, and even on Zoom here. Lord, I pray that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, you will restore their lives, O oh God. Bring them back to Calvary, O oh God. Wash them in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bring them back, O oh God Almighty, with zeal, O oh God Almighty, with strength, with favor, with power, with new fire. Release a new oil upon them. Release a new grace upon them. Give them a new opportunity, King of glory. Have mercy upon all backsliders today. Thank you, Lord. I pray for anyone, O oh God Almighty, under the sound of my voice, who, who have wasted their life and lost times and processions and family. Father, please restore to them today, in the name of Jesus Christ, all that you have lost, time, people, uh, human resources, financial resources, you've lost your marriage, you've lost your money and business, you've lost your health. I pray God will restore you back today and launch you even into the realm of Rehoboth like never before. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God forevermore. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody who loves the Lord shout a very loud hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Pastor David and Pastor Barry, God bless you all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir, as you fed up with the overflow on the wealth and your and your anointing. May God continue to refill you more and more in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, let us pray our tithe and our offering. Uh, I want us to please take your phone right now. Now the account, the different church account number will be displayed on the screen. If you are from Court Parish, the account will be displayed. From Whitney Parish, the account number will will be displayed. And from Abindi also, the account number will be displayed. Brother and sister, that's one thing I've met today. That's one thing I've met today. The attitude of report. If you want God to bless you abundantly, say, be a, be a, bless the church generously, sacrificially, and joyfully. And you know, be expected, you know, from what our father read. Now, and next something from the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 17. Now, when you bless the church, you know, with the, the little of the overflow of what God has blessed you, you know, God will refill that. And he says, I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond numbers, like the star in the sky and the sun in the seashore. Your descendants will cover the city of their enemies, and through your descendants, all the nation of the earth will be blessed, all because you have Obey God as you are obeying God with the nature or the overflow of what God has blessed you with. God will enlarge your course and the name of God will be glorified in your life. I believe we are, we are doing so. Mrs. Stadiola, online, please. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. How many of us are going higher? We are going higher, higher, higher. Exceedingly. Please say after me. I am going higher. Good eye. I am going higher. Please say it. Prophesy it. I am going higher.
Please bow our head. Let us pray. Our dearest Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity given to us to give in your presence. Father, thank in Jesus' name. With the authority deposited in our life through you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because we have given generously today, Almighty God will enlighten our course in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because we have given sacrificially in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, every door of joy that we knock will open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because we have given joyfully, tears of joy will not depart away from our household in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And every one of us expecting, wanting or the other in the presence of God, Writing, you written your prayer points, and you're expecting the miracle to happen because you give it today. God will answer all your prayer points speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The name of God will be glorified in your life and your also and in church of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed today and you're happy to have been a part of this this morning, of what God has done in your life, why don't you just shout a rousing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout, let the neighbors hear, let Oxford hear that hallelujah. we are moved into our rainbow. God has done something new in our lives. Hallelujah. hallelujah. We thank God. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dad and the Lord, for the opportunity today. Honestly, we've been so blessed. And we want to say thank you to your organizing committee as well, everyone that was involved in it. Thank you so much. Um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's coming to an end slightly. But I, if you want Daddy to come back again, just raise your hands. If you've been blessed and you want him to, you want to see him again. So please, uh, I think that's a unanimous decision that uh, we'll have to get you back in at some point in the future. However, for just a quick announcement, uh, unfortunately, from next 
well, it's not unfortunately, it's good, good, goodly. Uh, we are, as from next week, uh, we will back into our individual parishes. So, we want to say thank you for every single church that is present. Uh, thank you to Lighthouse Abilene for all our members. Thank you to Lighthouse in Whitney, to Salvation House in Didcot. Come on, clap for yourselves as well, because you've been about and you know, celebrate God for what God has you. You've not, you've not, you've not postponed it to tomorrow. You, just, you joined it yesterday, and you joined it today. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the things that God has done in our lives, those things, the things, the work is started. Our movement to the real booth will be completed in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So from next week, obviously, we'll back onto our individual, um, into our individual churches. Um, so let's be, let's be aware of that. Um, in particular, for Lighthouse Happening, uh, please be reminded of our light of the family uh, Monday morning prayer which takes place uh, from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and evening prayers from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, to 7 p.m. Uh, let's all connect and pray together. And I believe uh, maybe we'll get the leaflet um, on, on some sort of platform where, you know, again, like this, because I quite enjoyed seeing this. So maybe that's something we'll do a bit more often as well. Um, but yeah, we can all get access to that. I'm sure we'd all want to be a part of that as much as possible. Uh, and in Lighthouse Whitney, uh, for all of us, obviously, our Sunday services resumes as normal, uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, for any further information, I'll just give you the number, uh, which is 0744741610. I repeat, 0744741610. Um, that's for our Lighthouse uh, Whitney Parish. Lighthouse Nabindin, our service, I believe, is 1030 as well. So, again, feel free to join us. Uh, if you know anyone that lives close to the area or just want to be a part of it, feel free to join us as well. And then there's uh, Salvation House in Didcot as well. Again, our service is 10.30, again, on Sundays. So feel free to join us um, if, you're, or if you know anybody that would love to be a part of that. Um, and God will continue to bless us in Jesus' name. As we just round up tonight, I just want us to consolidate the blessing of God upon our lives. But something that, that really stuck with me uh, when our daddy was teaching us about when you move into real boat, the blessing is not only for you, is to be a blessing. So why don't we just use the opportunity next one minute or so just to bow down and just pray for someone. Just just reach out to someone. They, whoever the Holy Spirit puts into your own heart. And let's just reach out. To whatever the, the anointing we receive today know, of that place of real boat. Let's just reach it out to somebody somewhere. I don't know who it is. Whoever God lays in your heart, that God will bring them to their place of Rehoboth, to their place of Rehoboth, that God will use us in the place of your workplace. Begin to imagine, begin to, to specify to God, Lord, I want to be a blessing. I want you to use me to impact life positively in different ways, in different forms. Begin to spread. Let's, let's intercede for, for our community. Let's intercede for this, for Oxford here. Let's intercede that Rehoboth, as we are in Rehoboth, that God will use us as a salt of this to salt this environment in the name of Jesus, that there will be a new move of God in this environment, that the things we receive, the blessing we receive from God, God will emanate out of us into this environment, into dead court, into Sydney, into Abendine, into Oxfordshire, as a whole in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If there are any other questions and announcements, I'm sure they will be passed across to us in due course. Um, in the meantime, let's just share the grace together. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and we shall join the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Bless you all. Pastor Kibis. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our dear pastors. God bless you all our workers. Pastor, I pray. Testimony will follow up after the service in Jesus' name. Your grace, God bless you. Thank you. Christmas, I mean, blessed Christmas, Pastor Dewis. Uh, I'm expecting my, my turkey and my chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Remember, you are bring the chicken from there. <laughs>
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful Have a week. celebration. Hello. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. End of the season to everyone. Let everybody Amen. Amen. home in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank Bye. you. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 We go to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Mommy's a watching day. Yeah, I can see you. Bye.